Okay, well, it is noon, and we've got a good bunch of people coming in. I will get us started. Uh, my name is Steve Hayes. I am Director of Industry Relations for Greater Southern MLS, and I am located here in Covington, Louisiana, and I will let my cohort here uh, introduce herself and where she is. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. My name is Michelle Phillips, and I'm a systems trainer uh, here at Greater Southern MLS, um, and I am over in Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, so Steve and I are on two different sides <laughs> of the state. Yep. I tell you what, um, Michelle Phillips is uh, by far the single best systems trainer I've ever had the pleasure to work with and uh, or to even know uh, with the MLSs that I've been involved with. And uh, what we're going to get through today uh, will probably change your mind a little bit about what um, Realist can actually do for you. Uh, but one of the first things I want to talk about is some of the differences about Greater Southern MLS in general and um, where an agent's mindset should be around what an MLS is. Um, some of you may have heard me talk about this before, but I always like to cover it because really the real estate industry is changing so rapidly. I've been a broker for 26 years. And uh, when I first started uh, was the year where I was at uh, that the MLS first went online and was getting rid of the books. And so to see, you know, what all has uh, transpired uh, in these 26 years has been quite amazing. An MLS in the past has been, if you think about what the books were, you know, once a week there was a book printed of all the properties that were currently on the market. And you had to be a realtor to get this coveted book of information of properties to sell. And um, that was really what it was, was an exchange of information between this agent and that agent or all these agents in that area. But you had to flip through the pages to see what what homes were in there. Well, when it went online, then um, it quickly started to become not just an exchange of information between agents um, and really, truly now that is the bare minimum least piece of what an MLS is. Uh, while that does give us the opportunity to provide um, offers of compensation to, you know, other agents, et cetera, and provide information, an MLS ultimately is a marketing platform. Because if you think about what goes into the MLS and all the numbers of places that it's placed um, around the internet uh, through different services, um, different syndications, the, the, what you place in the MLS has to be the best of the best marketing materials, has to be the best photos. It has to be um, the, uh, the best um, uh, uh, descriptions of the property. Uh, let's see, we got, am I the only one having audio issues? We haven't had anybody else ask about audio issues. Um, so, you know, what you place in the MLS is 100% where everything else gets disseminated, you know, across the, the internet. And Greater Southern MLS works very hard at making sure that the, the, uh, we give you the abilities to market uh, properly, to develop business on both the listing side and the buyer side. Um, and what we're going to talk about today with Realist is actually how to locate potential new listings using Realist. But in other things that are available through Greater Southern MLS, um, one thing in, that I like to say is uh, we, we allow up to 75 photos of your properties because that's that's a huge thing you can get your uh, you know floor plans loaded in there you know to display and your 3d tours also in the property descriptions it's very important that when you market a property that you um you know realize that what your job is is not to just give a a, a ran you know a, a plain description of three beds, two baths, two car garage, park like setting. No, you're supposed to be emotionally moving that buyer or emotionally moving the buyer's agent to help emotionally move the buyer to want to see that property. And so there needs to be a very nicely well done um, 
lifestyle narrative of the lifestyle that the home provides. And we provide 4,000 characters in our uh, public remarks and our syndication remarks. We have two separate fields for uh, public remarks and syndication remarks, and those can be used differently. So Greater Southern MLS is owned by brokers, about 62 brokers around the state of uh, Louisiana currently own Greater Southern MLS, and we partner with two local associations who sell the subscription services to Greater Southern MLS. Anybody around the state can join Greater Southern MLS. As long as your broker is a participant, then you can become a subscriber and uh, utilize the services to increase the marketing of your property. So um, you're going to want to um, you know, really uh, think about what would what would you spend to have increased marketability of uh, the properties that you're listing, or to see properties that are available in other areas of the state, uh, have uh, access to some additional um, uh, statistics and and market analytics. So think about that. But today we're going to talk about a little product called Realist and what that can do for you. Uh, very typically, the agent's thought process of Realist stops at looking to find the legal description and maybe the lot dimensions, maybe that's about it. Um, you know, they, they tend to think that it's a very um, uh, limited use for Realist, but I tell you what, I'm going to turn this over to Michelle Phillips. Uh, she is outstanding at all of these tools, and she's going to show you some great things that you can do with Realist. So don't forget to unmute yourself, Michelle, and then take it away. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I, I tell you, I get really excited about Realist. And, um, you know, when I talk to agents, I don't think, as Steve mentioned, they know the capacity of information and the things that can be done at Realist. So, um, Everything I'm going to go over today, I do um, a full, like full training on. So today is just going to be some quick bullet points of some of the things that you can do and start using today in Realist. Um, and then, um, you know, if you want to go deeper, we can definitely deep dive further in another training. So, um, so let's just talk about what is Realist. So Realist is an all-in-one solution uh, that pull, puts everything that you need right together um, at your fingertips. Um, it is tax and public record data that is integrated into the MLS. So I always say realist tax and the MLS talk to each other. Um, you may have noticed when you're in the MLS at times, you might hit a parcel number because it's blue and it might hyperlink you over into realist uh, tax. So that is how the two um, are intertwined and combined. So realist tax is definitely everything that's recorded at your courthouse. So it's all those uh, public records. So some of the things you might find in there would be uh, sales information, foreclosure information, mortgage, tax data, property dimensions. Um, and what are, the most re what are the reasons are the most popular things that an agent would do in realist tax is to look at a particular property. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Uh, let's share that. Can y'all see my screen? Steve, can you see um, Got it. that? Perfect. All Got right. It. Yep. So this is the dashboard um, at Greater Southern MLS. Um, you can definitely access Realist Tax right here on the dashboard. Um, but I'm going to go into the MLS and show you also some areas and some ways that you can access Realist Tax as well. So just going into the MLS, this is the Greater Southern MLS dashboard. Um, you would notice that for those subscribers of Greater Southern MLS, we do have a tab at the very top um, that will take you straight into Realist Tax, um, just like that. So super easy to access um, from the MLS as well. I'll go ahead and access it from the MLS just to show you um, how easy uh, it is to use and utilize um, the database. So this is the Realist Tax database. Um, so I'll just go over a couple of things here. Um, so here we kind of look at it as um, views are, are different uh, areas, different tabs, different views. So you've got your search criteria here. You also have a map at the top, and then you've got just your uh, listing, uh, a list uh, customizable table down at the bottom. 
So I want to start uh, right here uh, for those of you that maybe have used real estate and maybe have never um, done this step. I would encourage you to do it. And for those of you who are brand new to real estate tax, I encourage you to go uh, to do this first as well. So the first thing you really need to do is to go into, um, it says counties. So real estate tax is nationwide, right? Um, and we know we're very special here in the state of Louisiana and we have parishes. Um, but this database is consistent across the nation. So it does say county here uh, at the top. So I want to go into uh, the parishes here because this is where you have the ability to choose the parishes where you live and practice real estate. Okay, so you can have up to 12 different parishes selected. Um, so I encourage you to go in uh, to Real Estate Tax today and select the parishes where you practice real estate. Um, because this is a nationwide database, if we can specify um, where we practice real estate, when we type in an address, when we're looking for properties, Real Estate Tax is going to know exactly uh, what parish uh, to look for and to go to to look for these addresses that you type in. Okay, so it just functions uh, much better uh, by doing this step. So the next thing I want to point out is you see uh, some of the parishes that I have selected. I have nine selected. Remember, I can have up to 12. But I want to draw your attention to the recording dates uh, that you might notice uh, for some of these parishes. These recording dates are the last official successful recording date that these, uh, these courthouses have recorded all of the tax information uh, that might be needed. They've successfully completed all the recording, uh, all the recorded information as of these dates. So for instance, if we look at Borgard Parish, we see that it's 3-26-23. So that means that on March 26, that is the last successful uh, completed recording date uh, that Borgard has had. I say this because if I'm looking for property data in Borgard Parish, and if I know there's been a sale or some kind of recent activity um, after the date of um, March, it's March, and from March 26th, um, then that information may not be recorded and we may not see that information yet, okay? So that's just strictly what these dates mean. Um, we'll look at some others. Calcasieu Parish is um, April 5th, uh, so that's their last, and that's mainly kind of the parameter that the other parishes um, are recording as well. Uh, Cameron Parish, they're a little behind, um, obviously, um, and rightfully understood. They had, um, were definitely the brunt of some of the hurricanes and, and things of that nature. This date does get updated uh, consistently, but just know that if there was some something you were looking for, some kind of recording you were looking for that happened after uh, September of 2022, it just may not be recorded yet. So just wanted to draw your attention um, and to explain uh, what some of that meant. Um, but those are um, your county selections or your parish selections, okay? All right, so to search for properties, you can search for any property. It doesn't matter if it's on the market or off the market. In fact, I always encourage agents, if someone called you today and said, hey, I want you to list my house, I definitely encourage you to go to Real Estate Tax before you go to that listing appointment for a couple of reasons. One, you need to type in this address and, and two, you need to make sure that that person that called you that wants to sell that property is actually the person or persons that can sell that property, right? So you need to make sure that you have, you're meeting with the right people, but not only that, you're able to gather some information about the property before you go to that listing appointment. Um, so you've got a quick search and you've got a more advanced search. Usually uh, realtors would utilize this quick search. You can search uh, by addresses. You can search by owner names. Uh, these can be their first or last names or a corporate name or an LLC, something of that nature uh, that they might have. You can also search by MLS listing numbers and then, of course, parcel numbers. Okay. So I'm just going to type in um, an address here just so um, you can see uh, the information that uh, you would see. Um, oops, let's see here. You're not going to get anything. <laughs> nope, not going to get anything there. All right. Well, okay. 
So as I start typing uh, an address, um, if you notice down here at my match count, um, it's letting me know as I begin to type in this address and it's also populating uh, the address, um, but it's pulling this information because I have my parishes selected. So it knows where I'm looking for properties. So I can very easily click on that. Again, pay attention to your matches, just like you do in the MLS. Um, I do have that one. And for or in order for it to pull up, I need to hit search. When I hit search, all of the information about this property is going to then populate. And here is the good stuff, right? This is the good stuff of all the information you're going to see about any property on the market or off the market. The property detail report, if you've taken any of my trainings, I always say work the tabs, work the tabs. There's more information <laughs> on each tab. So notice there's a lot of info here, um, but this property details report, this is um, this is going to be like the money tab, right? This is where most realtors are going to go and the tab they're going to look at when they're in real estate tax. So let's just go through some of the information just really quick. Um, so we see some information about this property and we do see when we see MLS in front of it, that means that this property has been listed in the MLS before. And this is the information that was recorded um, and listed by the agent when the property was listed in MLS. So we've got some owner information. So if someone called me today and wanted me to go um, and meet with them because they were interested in listing their house, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it was one of the Pikus that called me, right? Um, so definitely here's the owner information. It also does tell you if this property is owner occupied. Um, so it's really cool because in a moment, I'm going to show you how you can utilize, pro you can prospect and look for buyers and sellers utilizing real estate tax and by determining if the property is owner occupied or not, that is one of the parameters where you can search for potential um, for potential prospects. So you've got some location information. Another thing I like to do, um, I guess this might tell on my age, um, is when I pull this up, if I were going to list this house, I would go right here to print. And I would print this data. I would print this data. Um, and depending on how you work your business, some people like to use files and file some of this information in there. Or even if you went to print it and saved it as a PDF to put into your dot loop or something like that, you're able to capture all this information. So you don't have to keep looking it up. You always have it right there uh, at your fingertips. So you can definitely print it. You can email it. There's lots of different things you can do here with this data. I say all of that because if I list this house, this is the information I'm going to need, right? I'm going to need parcel numbers. I'm going to need legal descriptions. I'm going to need the information that I find here in real estate tax. Some additional information would be all of your tax information. It's a rolling three years worth of tax data, but you're able to find that here. Your characteristics of your property. Again, if it begins with MLS, that means that that uh, information was entered into the MLS. Another thing you will find for every property is a sales score. How likely is this property to list within the next six months? Okay, so every property that is off the market has a sales score indicator, and it is how likely, um, and here is the range, this is how they kind of come up with those numbers, so this one is a low range, um, and it kind of tells you a little bit down here at the bottom how they utilize some of this artificial intelligence and some of the information that they gather um, to come up with this indicator. So that's another thing you can do. You can always look for homes based on sales score indicators. So some additional information, you've got all the listing information, the last market sale, sales history. I love this because this is where you're going to find all of that mortgage information. So anytime this property was used for a mortgage, it would be captured right here under property details. So we see some sometimes that this property uh, changed ownership, right? We see some different mortgages here. And then we also see this one. Do you notice this one? 
for $150,000. So what was this? Was this maybe a line of credit? Did they refinance? So there's lots of different things um, here that you can capture and gather. So when I do go to this listing appointment, are they going to let me know some of this information, right? So I know back in September of 2022, there was some sort of an additional mortgage, maybe a refinance or something that um, came out on this property. If the property had ever been um, under any foreclosure information, all of that would be here. It doesn't go away. So anytime or if this property was in a foreclosure status, you would see all of that information here. Okay, so here's the big money shot here, and it really blows my mind with how many realtors don't know that they can find property dimensions in realist tax. It really blows my mind because they'll say, well, hey, Michelle, if the property's listed in the MLS, well, some of that um, that lot dimension stuff will come up. Well, guess where it's coming from? It's coming from real estate tax. So you can go into real estate tax and find the lot dimensions for any property, any property. And this is what is recorded with the um, parish assessor. So this is at the assessor's office. Can some people be like, well, I'm not really sure if that's right. Well, that's what's recorded there. Um, and you can utilize this more or less. You can confirm um, all of those sorts of things, but your property dimensions are also listed in real estate tax. So anyway, so if you didn't know that, go share that with somebody today uh, because they're definitely, definitely in there. Um, all right, so that's your property details. Again, you can print this report. You can look at it. Um, let's look at some other things that Real Estate Tax will show you. Let's go into the comparables tab. So did you know that Real Estate Tax pulls comps for you? It pulls the comps for you. Um, and they're all utilizing within proximity. So if I look at my little map here, uh, the my subject property is here, this little uh, black pin here. Um, and then you see numbered properties around this property. So these are all properties that have been um, sold or have been listed within the last six months, okay? Um, and you can change. Um, you can go ahead and go in and set up your settings. I think I have mine set for proper, show me properties that have been sold within the last year, just so um, I have some more information to teach on. And so it shows um, more information for you guys. So these are all the properties within proximity that have been bought or sold. Um, within the last year. Um, also, if you notice here, it pulls those comps and it will give you um, a, a value for that home. It'll give you a range of value. So notice here, we do have kind of a bigger value, but you can customize the comps that were selected. Um, and to do that, uh, they're located down here at the bottom. So down here at the bottom part, these are all of uh, the comps that were pulled. Um, and what I really love about real estate tax, this one doesn't show one, but what I really love for real about real estate tax is it will show me comps that uh, were bought and sold through the MLS, but it will show me comps that were for sale by owner as well. Um, so yep. anytime you want to know if another property sold on a street, or maybe if you're meeting with the homeowner and they're like, well, I know the property just down the road sold, but I'm not sure how much it sold for. Well, you can find that out as a realtor, go to Realist Tax, hit on comps or type in the address of that property. And it, you can see what that property sold for. You can see uh, the sale of that property. Okay. And you have the ability to add that as a comp if you would like in your um, comparative market analysis. So uh, the way you would determine if it was a for sale by owner property is by looking at this MLS number column listing number. If there is no MLS listing number here and it's just blank, that means that property was for sale by owner. It was just public record information that was recorded at the courthouse. So that is how you can determine that uh, there wouldn't be an MLS number here. So that's how you can determine. If you scroll over, you see all of the uh, sale information for that property uh, as well. So pretty cool that you can do uh, comps. You can change your parameters. Uh, again, generate that report. Super easy to do, but great CMA capabilities right here in Real Estate. So pretty cool. What do you think, Steve? I pretty appreciate it. Huh? 
I appreciate everything that you know about uh, about these systems, and and I I say it every time. I always learn something new, and I've seen you know these things over and over and over again. So, if you're watching, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of know this. I kind of know this. Keep watching because yeah. she, she there's more to come, and she's going to point out a, a few cool things uh, yes. yet about what uh, this does beyond. Uh, That's even just the basics. Yeah, just, just the basics. Um, so the next tab here is your market trends. This is super cool because you have these gauges and this is just great information, um, especially in today's market, right? Things have changed. And if you're going on a listing appointment and you want to win that listing appointment, set yourself apart by bringing in some of this market overview information into that, that listing appointment. Some of the things that that homeowner is going to want to know is what are the current, what's the current market doing? How long are properties sitting on the market these days? What are the averages of average prices? What does the market look like today versus what it looked like, you know, a couple of years ago? Well, you can simply glance at these little gauges to to capture some of that information. So the way you would utilize these gauges, let's just look at the first one, this is closed sales. So if I look at the gray uh, gauge here, this is showing me these are the closed sales for March of 2023. And this is in the overview of the zip code 70605. And this is the market that is where this house is located. OK, so you might say, oh, Michelle, there were way more than 63 closed sales in the zip code 70605 in the month of March. You're correct. We're looking at the market trends for the neighborhood of where this property is located. All right. So it's very specific to that location. So 63 closed sales in March 2023. If we look at that uh, five year average for the month of March, for the Marches for the last five years, uh, we see that average is 50. OK, and so that's gauged here. So what does this tell us? There were more houses sold in March of 2023 in this particular neighborhood than there had been um, in the last five years, the average of the last five years. So that's impressive, right? So I can let um, my seller know, hey, there are more houses being sold in this particular area right now than there have been in the last five years, right? This is something that they may want to know. I think that's a very important point that you just you just mentioned is that this is specific to that that property area of yes. the address that you've got up up at the top uh, because it, if you if you weren't 100% up to speed on what this means you may say oh that's not right. right but that's why these trainings are so important is to really understand the the data behind it and the use of it and that was a very good point Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. So another one, we'll just look at another one here. Um, uh, median days uh, to contract sales. OK, so this is great. If I'm going on that listing appointment, I want to let my seller know what the current market is doing. And like, look at this one. So March of 2023, homes have been on the market for an average of 62 days in this particular area. Five year average for the month of March was only 42 days. So important to let that seller know, hey, I want you to know what's going on in the market right now. And right now, properties on average um, are, are on the market for 62 days. So we can set that expectation versus what it may have been a few years ago. So these are the market trends. There's the gauges. Then there's also the graphs that compare the zip code to the entire city, to the parish, to the state. Um, so it compares all of those different parameters. So Gosh. that's your market trends. Definitely pay attention to them because you need to set yourself apart on those listing appointments. You want to win that um, listing and you want your seller to know that, hey, you know what's going on in the market and you understand it. OK, mm -hmm. so definitely good stuff. You can also print those trends out as well to bring them to that appointment uh, if you would like. Next tab is, tab is your neighborhood, um, your neighbors. Uh, you can go through here. Again, your, your subject properties pinned in black, then they're numbered. Uh, from there, 
let's go down here, you can see all of the neighbor information, um, including who owns those properties, when they purchased them, how much they purchased them for. So you can see all of those neighbors. I don't know about you, but I've definitely been asked when showing a house, do you know who lives next door? Or do you know anything about the house next door, et cetera? Um, you as a realtor can see that information under the neighbor's uh, profile here. You also have a neighborhood profile. Remember we mentioned those market trends were specific to the area where that house is located. So is the neighborhood profile. Um, so here you're going to get the population again of the neighborhood where that property is located. Here we see number of households, household size, how many households have children, um, median age. Gosh, you go down. Look, it even breaks them down based on age, um, marital status, gender. Um, you see housing information, median year built for homes, right? So you have so much knowledge. And if you go into your appointment, letting your seller know, hey, I know this market, uh, then you're golden, right? You've also got occupancy information, how many houses um, are rented in a certain area versus um, owner occupied, um, quality of life. How crazy is this? <laughs> I, I think that's great. It, you know, even on the buyer side, you know, because people mm -hmm. are going to want to know, yes. well, it looks like there's a lot of rentals in the area and you, mm -hmm. well, you can kind of, you can tell them. Yep. That's, that's great. Yeah. This tool should be used no matter if you're working with a seller or if you're working with a buyer. Yeah. Period. That's a great like, tool. You need to capture this information. You should be going to this website on every trend, like uh, every deal that you have going on for sure. Um, you've got quality of life. What kind of work? What kind of industry do the workers in this area, where do they work? Are they white collar? Are they blue collar? Household income. There is so much information here That's crazy. Um, that you can share. It'll even show you local businesses around the property <laughs> that um, we, that you have or that you're looking at. So it gives you yeah, all looks that. Like Looks like you got to go check out what is, there's a barbecue place on there. Maybe yes, you got to go yes. check out. <laughs> definitely have some barbecue. Yeah, for sure. Got some businesses. So it shows you all of this information. Like it's, it's so beneficial. You do have some uh, flood uh, information here, but you know what? Here in the state of Louisiana, everything's in a flood, <laughs> right? Um, but you do have some flood and some hazard risk information uh, if need be. Um, also tied into this database. So just to go back here, you can print any of these tabs of information, you can email them, you can change the criteria, and you can change the view if you would need to. Um, so that's just information for a property, and that's what you should be looking at uh, for sure. Um, now let's kind of switch gears and let's talk about farming areas farming uh, and how to prospect, right? How to um, reach out to the people in the areas where you specialize and where you practice real estate. Um, so I'm just gonna use this little neighborhood uh, as an example here. So again, here's our little map. Um, you can just clear everything. I always like to encourage that, just utilize the clear all button just to make sure that everything is clear um, because you're going to see in a minute, we can turn on some filters, turn off some filters. Um, so just make sure that you've cleared uh, out the information uh, as you begin your search. So, so let's go through this. Let's go through um, our little map here first. We'll go through our map view and let's talk about some of these tools here at the top. Um, so you've got your drawing tools. So you can search for properties. That's, is, that's how we're going to prospect. We'll, we'll do that now. Um, we'll just use a rectangle tool here so you can just grab that. So uh, let's say I uh, specialize or I practice real estate. I am the specialist in, let's do this little area here. Let's say this, these three streets. Okay, we'll just make this easy. Um, so I just drew a shape around these three streets. We'll just pretend like this is my farming area. Uh, I am the specialist in this area. And let me show you how you can see some additional information about this specific area where you are the expert, okay? So we'll just put on that hat. 
I'm the expert in this area. So we just used our drawing tool here at the top to draw a little shape around that. So let's look at some other things. So let's go to the next tab here. So these are boundaries. Uh, and we can turn on these individual things. I love to turn on the parcels because now did you see what just happened on my map? All of the little parcels became defined. So now each little square represents an individual parcel in this area where I am farming or where I specialize in real in, in practice real estate. You can turn on zip codes, cities, counties. Obviously, if your map was larger, school districts, Flood zone, I love to turn on the flood zone um, in this particular uh, map. So at any time, I can turn this flood zone on and I can see exactly the flood zones in these areas. So super easy to do. You saw that I just did that um, and it gives me the exact um, zone. Like it tells this is flood zone X or this is X shaded, et cetera, right? And it, well, it, it tells me that, but then it also gives me uh, the flood information at the, the bottom. Yep. So pretty cool, right? So I'm going to turn these this off. Uh, it gets kind of busy and I want to be able to show you um, some additional things. Um, so I'll just turn that off and we'll move on uh, to the next um, map pin. We'll talk about that one for a moment. So the next one is property and sales. So um, I can look for distressed properties. Let's say I wanted to look for properties uh, that are at auction, bank owned, short sales, uh, REO sales. I notice I just turned on all four of those and check this out. Do you see these little um, pins that have just popped up, Steve? Do you see these? Yep. Yep. I did. You see this? So I I've see got an short auction. Sale. Yep. <laughs> you have, I've got an auction. But if this is my farming area and this is where I practice and specialize real estate, maybe I want to reach out to these people, right? Not let them know, hey, I know your house is about to go to auction, but if I just send them a postcard, let them know um, I am not only am I their neighbor, but I'm their neighborhood realtor or I am the neighborhood specialist, maybe they'll reach out to me because they are maybe... I can educate them and let them know that, hey, I can sell your house, you know, let's sell your house before you lose it or whatever it might be. Maybe, you know, an investor that could um, take over. So do you see how easy that was? I that literally was cool. just turned on those distressed properties. Now I can see them everywhere. Yes, I've just drawn this on um, as my little map here. I have these specific streets, but notice it popped up uh, all over. Okay, so that's just stress properties. Let's see, what else do we have? You've got some, I can look for tax sales. That would be some for sale by owner sales. I can turn those guys on as well. Notice I have three months indicated here. Look at these guys. What does this tell me? It tells me that these properties were recently sold. Um, I can also click on any of these parcels and capture the information for any of these parcels as well, just by doing this. So I can see that this property, um, it, some of the recording information was 331 of 2023. Okay, so I can see that information. Let's see what else we can see. I can turn on MLS <laughs> statuses if I need to. Um, how about this? I can see what properties are for sale, which have recently sold. Remember those two tax sales that I saw a moment ago? Um, they were recorded through the courthouse. So that's why I captured that info uh, and can see that. I can change those dates, but I can see everything on the market in that good farming area. Remember, if you're the specialist in that area, you need to know. And then check this out. Okay, so I like to do this too. So let's say I want to do address. Okay, so I just clicked on address uh, here in my map. Uh, it's taken a little minute, but do you see how, let's see if I can zoom it in a little bit. Okay, there we go. I was zoomed out too far. Oh, there it goes. See how all of the property addresses pop up right here on my map? So if I need to see, oh, where is that house located? I can very quickly look at it uh, here on the map by turning that on. Let's see what else I can do. I'll undo that. You can even do this owner name. Check this out. All the owner names for those properties will pop up as well. So you can see all of that info. Very cool. Nicole. So let's go to some trends. So I can see the median sales price. I can turn on these trends as well. Um, that will give me some of the median sales prices uh, in a particular area uh, and some other information I might want aggregation information, property type information. I can be like, 
show me where all the condos are, right? I can turn those on as well. Okay, so, so much to do. Let's turn this back off. All right, so those are some additional things. Okay, this is pretty cool too, points of interest. Let's say somebody's like, I wanna live next to a school and a gas station and a bank, whatever it might be, a post office. You can turn on these different points of interest and uh, they will pop up on the map. It does take a little bit for those guys to pop up. I'll leave them on um, just to see, oops, I moved this, just to see uh, what does pop up or when they pop up. Let's see if some of them did. Uh, not just yeah, yet. There's a, but, yeah, there's a school. There's there. a school. Yeah, so the little pins will pop up on the map um, for all of the different points of interest uh, that you turn on. So you can do use that. You've got your driving directions. This is always helpful if somebody's like, oh, I only live 15 minutes from work. You can definitely do that. Uh, you can jump to a, an address just by typing in the address. You do have a ruler where you can measure. You've got some annotation tools, and then you can clear them all. So pretty neat. So that's how you're going to work uh, on your specific map uh, to come up with different. I'm um, just going to move this over a little bit how to come up and how to search for different things. So I hope we're good with how to do our forming area. Now great. let me show you how easy it is to capture all of the addresses in your forming area. Um, so I hear agents tell me too, they're like, oh, hey, so I'm going to do this postcard and I've got to go buy these addresses and all this stuff. And I'm like, why? You have it all. You have all of it. So let's go back to our example. Maybe this is the farming area. I live in this neighborhood. I specialize and practice real estate in this neighborhood. And let's pretend like I want to send all of these homeowners a postcard that says, I don't know, not only am I your neighbor, but I'm your neighborhood realtor. Or maybe I want to send them, you know, I don't know, some kind of touch point. Um, we just had Easter, but maybe what's coming up? I don't know. Happy summer. Happy Fourth of July. Something like that. Right. So let me show you how you can capture all of these addresses. All right, so here we are. We have our little shape uh, right here. I drew a little shape around um, those, my, my uh, area where I farm, okay? So now I, after I draw my shape, I can hit the search button. Remember, thing when I type in addresses and it shows me those matches, I need to hit search. Uh, so when I hit search, oops, something went wrong. Let's see here. Let's take this off here. Okay, perfect. So now let's, let me just redo our shape here. We'll clear our shape. Okay, so let me just go back in and uh, we'll draw our little shape again. All right, perfect. Here's our shape. It's always when you want to be demonstrating. You got to love technology. I know, right? Okay, let me clear it. Clear all. Let's go this again here. Uh, we're going to grab our little tool. Okay, perfect. We drew our little shape. Um, now we can hit search. Yeah, don't know. Uh, let's see. We just make sure nothing's turned on. It doesn't look like it. Let's just go back here. We'll go here. Okay, we'll just do it one more time. Um, come on, this needs to work. We'll draw a little shape. We'll just do a little shape here. Yeah, okay, I'm not really sure why it's telling me something's going wrong, but let me just show you how easy it is to capture these addresses. So literally, here's the steps. You draw a shape around um, your farming area or where the addresses you want to capture. So we did that. Step one, draw shape using your little pencil tool. Step two is you're going to hit search, right? This is where all of the data is going to pull. So what I would see is down below right here, I would see every parcel, every property that is within this shape, okay? So it'll all just be listed here. Then the next step is, do you see these buttons down here, Steve, where I can, mm -hmm. I can once I hit search and it pulls up all that information, I can, I can export it. So this is great because if this is your forming area, you don't have to export it every single time you want to use it. I can do it, export it, and save it. And save now it. I have it all <laughs> captured yep. in my Excel. So if I want to quickly print out zip codes for my next campaign, I can very easily do that. So I can export them. I can print them. I can email them. And the next option is labels. Um, for whatever reason, they didn't pull up. 
Um, but let me just try to do, let me just try to capture one of them. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Let's just see here. Let me just try to capture parcel. Yeah, I'm not sure what this thing's doing. It's doing crazy stuff. Anyway, um, I don't know why it's. Yeah, because usually okay. it pulls up the info. It just pulls it right up. I'm not sure um, what it's doing. We're having a little moment over here. Um, but anyway, when you, when I hit search and all of the data comes up, do you see this button right here that says labels? I literally can hit the button that says labels and it's going to ask me, what size paper do you have? <laughs> yeah, it'll um, ask you which Avery brand, yeah, which number, Avery or whatever. Paper, yeah, what, what do you have? And I just say, okay, this is the paper I have, and it, it and I stick my paper into the the paper uh, the printer, and it prints all of the labels. I can say include the homeowner's name, uh, don't include the homeowner's name. I can even edit them after I have them all set up in the Avery paper, um, in that spreadsheet when it pulls up in Word. It's so simple. So simple to use. Not really sure why it's giving me grief right now, just because it wants to. It, but, it's because we're doing a webinar, but of course, um, yeah. I know but I've used so it. In, use. I've used it in the past um, uh, when when uh, I would list a property in the neighborhood, then I would do whatever radius around there, and you know, do a postcard that would say, yes, "Pick sir. your neighbor," you know, and did the just listed. Well, when I would, I would use the export uh, feature. Uh, where you can actually export yes. the the Excel CSV file of all the addresses yes. because I use a, a postcard service where I design my postcards and mail them out of yes. there. I never touch them. And then when the property sold, then I would do a welcome your new neighbor postcard. Yes, I love and, that. And instead of a just sold, it's welcome your new neighbor, right? I love it. Um, so you, then you've already got the addresses. You don't have to go back and do it again. You've got it in your postcard system, et cetera, and, nice. and, and can do that on top of any, you know, market stats or anything that you want to continue to send, uh, you know, to that area. So, and you are given, um, 5,000 yes. per month, Correct. per month that you can export. So it, I, that, a that's a that's a lot of addresses you know i might do 250 to 500 maybe depending on how many areas i might be working in or what what my goal is so if you're doing 5000 a month holy smokes i mean mm -hmm. the addresses are here you can actually even choose and filter whether they're owner occupied yes. or or of uh, or a uh, an absentee owner so maybe you want to uh target people that are using them as rentals and hey do you want to sell you know a variety of different things so you can't you know maybe you want to talk to the the occupant of that rental yes. and maybe they want to buy a home right? right so you can find the 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 non-owner occupied ones there's so many different ways that you can utilize the data within Realist in order to generate a business and think yes. outside the box of of what kind of business that that might be right because if somebody's not living there and they're renting it maybe they want to sell it or the occupant might want to buy right. who knows yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's great and that that is that is that is definitely the prospecting piece of it you nailed it steve um and that draw that shape around wherever that forming area is wherever you want to look and as steve mentioned from there we can really fine tune it. We can even use some of those uh, parameters up in the map search. Show me all the properties that are owner occupied, as you mentioned. Show me uh, those that are not. And then who do I want to target? And from there, I can very easily uh, capture the data I need uh, based on what I'm looking for and who I want to reach out to. So it's yep. it's fantastic. So I definitely encourage everyone, if you're not using Realist, it really should be used no matter which side of the transaction you're on. Yeah, I, you know, and I haven't really, um, and, and I'm guilty of this, right? I've been a broker for 26 years and I hadn't really thought about, you know, how to, how to utilize it so much on the buyer side. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Um, You know, uh, sometimes and and that's a good point. You know, okay, I've been a broker for 26 years, but I'm stuck in this train of thought of of what it is that I use on a regular basis, as opposed to, you know, hey, what can it do outside of my Mm -hmm. normal routines to generate some business? Because it is a little bit more difficult right now. Right. Uh, Listings are gold. Uh, Listings are gold. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being able to uh, farm an area, be able to win the appointment, um, you yes. know, those are most uh, the the biggest objective. Mm-hmm. So did you have anything you wanted to, yeah, to show? Just really quick, I was just going to show um, everyone on how uh, the two uh, real estates and the MLS are linked. So I just have a listing pulled up and notice here at the parcel number, it is blue. If I click on it, this is where it's going to hyperlink me into Realist Tax. So notice here is the property detail. Um, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I was not going to open up. So here is, a, I just clicked on that parcel and it brought me into Realist Tax to that property details and to remember all those other tabs at the top of all that other valuable yep. information that you can go capture. So all I did was click on the parcel number and it opened it up here in Realist of all the data that I need. So it's. Yep. So it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> Definitely good stuff. So we got a couple of questions yeah, here. Let's, yeah. um, Brody asks, I'm a newer agent in GBRAR and use Rome MLS. Realist is not an icon on my MLS homepage. How can I get access to Realist? I do not know whether uh, GBRAR utilizes because they're in a Paragon platform and we're in a matrix platform. So I do not know uh, what GBRAR has available as far as Realist. You would have to take that up with them. You can certainly become a subscriber to Greater Southern MLS if you would like um, access to the tools. You do not have to join another local association uh, just because it's uh being offered through neighbor and Southwest, you do not necessarily have to join them as an association. They would most certainly welcome you, um, but you can get an MLS only subscription and um, have access to all of these tools and additional marketing uh, capabilities because we've got about 18 different products that are included uh, within uh, Greater Southern MLS. Uh, Go back to that dashboard. Uh, Michelle, yeah, yeah. and here you can see some of the other tools that we cover in other webinars, Cloud CMA, HomeSnap Pro, eProperty Watch, InfoSparks, et cetera. We've got a great suite of tools here uh, that can assist you. Um, and Will, uh, was a little late getting to the webinar. How do I find and log into Realist? Um, Will, it would depend on... Um, uh, which uh, MLS you are in as to how you would get to it. With Greater Southern MLS, it is right here on our Clarity dashboard. Uh, when you log in, then it goes straight here. Yeah. Okay, another question. Maybe, Yeah, maybe for those guys, if you go into your MLS too, like we did with this one listing, see if where, when you hit the parcel number, like where it hyperlinks you, because that's where it's your platform is pulling data. So yeah. maybe try that just to see. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> no, that that's great, and and that's that's another uh, good feature of of uh, the yes. real list within the matrix platform is that it it ties the two together mm-hmm. so that as long as the agent does their job and enter the correct information, it will connect it. Um, let's see. Uh, Jody asks, I'm a member of Jezrin slash Rome. Our real list does not show actual property tax amounts by year. Do you know if what shows up on real list depends on the parish where the property of the interest is located? Yes, it does. It depends on what data is included from that parish that is being fed to real list. And uh, so that would have some limit to it. Um, Carolyn asks, uh, what is the cost to have access to Greater Southern MLS to use Realist? Carolyn, that would depend on which association you were to get your uh, MLS only subscription through, um, but it is between $30 and $40 a month, depending on uh, which association you go through. Um, you get the same exact services, same exact MLS, same exact tools, um, and uh so you're with GBRAR as well, yes. So you, you can stay a member of Greater Baton Rouge Association of Realtors, 
um, and uh, still get your uh, MLS only subscription as long as your broker is a participant of Greater Southern MLS. Uh, Wendy, my association uses Flex MLS. Am I still able to use these tools? Um, you can if you are a member of Greater Southern MLS. Your uh, real list uh, data should still be there from um, that parish. Um, of course, depending on uh, if you're using Flex, my guess is you're over in uh, Lafayette area. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they just have a different set of tools. This is everything that's included for the subscription price is what you see on our dashboard right now. Jody says, thank you, been using Realist for years, but have never explored all of its features. This was helpful, yes. Michelle Yay. is fabulous. <laughs> um, Michelle is fabulous. I tell you, we offer these webinars, um, um, and this kind of speaks to um, with um, uh, Rhoda here. I'm a member of Jezrin. How could I get more training on Realist, preferably with Michelle? We actually get that a lot because um, Greater Southern MLS, um, I, I think uh, people don't truly understand what we have because we do have staff live here on the ground. We've got, show them the customer support hours, bring that up. Oh yeah, let's check, watch this. You know, okay. Because so. we, we, you can get training um, through our, our, our training and I'll have her show you where you can sign up. We do prefer, we ask that you would be a Greater Southern MLS subscriber if you're going to utilize our trainings, but that's not a requirement. Right now we have it open to everyone and she'll show you where that is in a little bit, Rhoda. Um, and Wendy, okay, says you are with Greater Southern MLS, great. Um, right. So yes, you would still be able to utilize the tools that are included in Greater Southern yes. MLS, Wendy. Um, so our, our uh, support hours, if you take yes. a look at our support hours, we have uh, live support Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. And <laughs> I, I don't know of any other MLS here that has um, that kind of uh, support hours. And uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would assume that your current MLS, if you're not a subscriber to Greater Southern, is closed on the weekends. Uh, they're closed after 5.00. Very typically, problems occur after hours, weekends, you know, those kinds of things. When you're trying to work with clients and you can't get help, you can with Greater Southern MLS. We'd love for everybody to come over. Um, and then we also have uh, chat online support yes. as well during those hours. And show them where they can get signed up for uh, the trainings. Sure. Um, so our website is greatersouthernmls.com. Um, so greatersouthernmls.com on the home page is where uh, I usually say uh, that's where every pretty much everything our realtors um, need to know. Solutions are what products we bring. Education. Here it is. This is where we completely set ourselves apart is on education. Um, we bring you these tools. It's definitely a marketing platform, but if you don't know how to use them, then they're not doing you any good, right? And I always say too, if you're buying or if you've bought into additional products, you know what? You probably already have it here at Greater Southern MLS. Do you know how to use it? So here, oops, on our education tab right here, this is where you find all of our trainings, okay? So not only, I'll show you these couple of tabs. So we have webinars. These are our live webinars that I do. I do webinars, but then I also do in-office uh, trainings as well. We also have an entire YouTube channel of all of our training videos. So let's say you want to go in right now and watch a video on Realist Tax. You can go in and you can find uh, all of our videos. So you can you hit see all and you see Steve and I here, you see some others, but all of the videos that um, and all the trainings that I do are recorded and um, you can find them here uh, as well. Uh, let's go back here. So let me show you webinars. So here are the webinars that we have coming up, up uh, through this quarter. So if you just scroll down, here they are. 
Um, so for instance, if you want to see marketing secrets um, that I can share with you using our Greater Southern MLS program, then all you would need to do is register for this webinar um, on Monday the 1st. Register, you, you're sent a, a link just like you were to this Zoom, and you would just join me for any of these trainings. These are all free trainings. Um, as Steve mentioned, we definitely, these are for our subscribers, but if you would like to learn some information on these products, I'm happy to uh, share them with you. So here's all of those trainings that you can find that we have coming up. Again, greatersouthernmls.com, home. And then it's under education, and that's where you would find them under our webinars. And then if your office were to become um, subscribers uh, to Greater Southern MLS, there's another tab there that says Request Broker Office Training. Mm -hmm. Michelle will come in person, live, bright <laughs> and smiley. Uh, to your office and provide trainings there as well. So uh, yes. you, you want to think about that. Um, you know, our, our MLS is about education. It's about training. It's about marketing. It's about helping agents become uh, the most productive and successful and professional as they can. Being owned by brokers, the brokers want the agents to have uh, the best training and access and success that they possibly can. And so we look to help you de um, develop business uh, both on the buyer side and the listing side. And uh, we hope that you all um, remain profitable and successful. Yeah. <laughs> all right, sure. Rod. Rodney, you've been, you were listening. You got your audio uh, uh, worked out. Yay. <laughs> well, we are right at an hour. Yes. Um, Michelle, as always, you have done an outstanding job. Thank you, and Steve, as you as well. It's always great to have a great partner to, to roll all this out with. <laughs> absolutely. So I did put my uh, email uh, in the chat. Uh, Steve at Greater Southern MLS. Uh, Dot com. You can certainly reach out to me with any questions about how to join, uh, what does it take, what does it include, that kind of thing. I'll get you hooked up with the right people. If you have more questions about the mission of Greater Southern MLS, if you would like to become a shareholder as a broker, you can become a shareholder. Um, all of that, just reach out to me. And for trainings, you can uh, request trainings with Michelle uh, through the uh, request tab there. So yes. are we good? We're good. We're all good. Right. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you all being here. You bet. Enjoy the day, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.